want to pay extremely close attention. The rules are changing. If you don't know this information, you're more likely to be on the losing side than the winning side. I'm really excited about this. Jose, Katrina Ruth, Brian Dice, the one and only Russell Brunson. Sonia Lichnati, we have Molly here, Todd Brown, Roland Frazier, Michael Lichnati, Walker, Neil Kapel, Dennis Hughes. I think that there's a high risk of mass extinction of the internet business. Millions of businesses, big and small, close. Pushing us into the worst global recession in history. The lightning is on the wall. Things are changing. Things are happening. Change in the industry that's forcing people to evolve and adapt to the technology. You need to see this to understand it. Something like that will happen. You can lay this in blood. If there was a tactic or strategy that you were most excited about, what would it be? We can go as deep as you want. I call this content sprouting. These strategies work for any social media platform. If you believe it's a good idea, you should stick with it. When your business becomes part of the identity, you have to skip. This is really crazy. I don't know if I will share this with you. Waste the least amount of money to find that winner. That's how you work for a dollar a day. Now, I have people that are on my list for two years that are still hoping to do to get this many amazing people in a room, just amazing. We're about to take you behind the scenes. I'm not doing it, it's amazing. If you want to know what's happening in the future, shoot me now. If you don't know Wes Watson, Wes Watson, GP Penitentiary Life, YouTube channel creator, did 10 years in the California prison system, came out, started offering fitness and training programs. I tapped out. I tapped out at about 3,000 a month until my YouTube channel started to explode. And then I even tapped out with millions of views on this channel that was exploding. First video, 600,000 views. Second, 2.5 million. So when they say that you cannot blow up in your first video, I did, but my business did it. My business did because it capped out at 15,000 a month, even with all this organic views. So what happened was I got in touch with Rich Sheffern and he showed me the systems that brought me from 15K a month to 300K a month today, and we're still growing. The Steal Our Winners program for $1, you gotta sign up. I'm actually interviewed in the program. And what we're doing here is we're taking all the top people. Rick's got all the top people together. Everybody who's relevant in this sector right now that's crushing it and giving you all the Hey, hey. So welcome, everyone. Hopefully you can hear me right now. Let me know if you can. And um, we're broadcasting live to Facebook. Uh, many pages on Facebook, YouTube, um, LinkedIn, and Periscope. And today we're going to be talking about uh, the power of specific marketing ideas that in the 20 years that I've operated online, I can basically track the majority of my success, the overwhelming majority of the money I've made, down to three, just three, uh, marketing ideas that I've had over the course of 20 years. And uh, the, and I stole one idea, so that would be a fourth idea, um, and shared it with a client of mine, and that was a billion dollar idea. So today, uh, what I want to talk to you about are those types of ideas. And um, so if this is the first time that you're joining or you're a seasoned veteran, uh, please say hello. Let me know where you are. It's always nice to know who's joined us for today. Um, as always, I try to make these as much 
of a dialogue and less of a monologue. I can spend all day talking to myself. I don't need to turn on a live stream to do it. So I'm here for you and for you to get the most out of what I'm sharing. Uh, ask me questions, ask me questions on how this applies to you, or ask me questions that you feel I could help you answer that relate to any obstacle, setback, challenge, uh, problem, et cetera, that you have in your business. And uh, let's see, what else? Uh, as always, please comment and share, uh, thumbs up or emote, depending on if you're watching on YouTube or Facebook. If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe to our channel. If you're watching on Facebook, please join our Facebook group. And uh, yes, by all means, share. And if you share, put a hashtag shared in the chat so that I can thank you personally. And let's kind of dive in. So um, let's see here. Who do we have with us? We have John Sinclair. Thank you for sharing it to your group, John. I appreciate you. And Rajesh, good to see you. And Monica, uh, thank you for letting me know that you can hear me. And welcome, Monica. I don't know if I've ever seen you on these live streams before, but welcome. And AJ is in the house. That's Alex Jeffries. Uh, I love that day, too. Uh, Lewis in Mexico. Good to see you, Lewis. And Brian in Houston. Good to see you, Brian. And... Uh, <laughs> another person on Facebook saying Alex Jeffries, there's a face I haven't seen for a while. Alex, if you ever want me to know that it's you, all you have to do is go to streamyard.com forward slash Facebook and give StreamYard uh, approval to share your name when you post. Um, Hi, Rich. Why on earth do you always do this at 2 p.m. Eastern? Too precious not to do this after hours. Um, we do the Thursdays after hours from six to eight, but the Tuesdays from two to four are um, for those of you who can make it here in the U S but also for all our international um, clients, et cetera. Right. Um, Cause uh, it's like 7 PM over in Europe and beyond. And uh, even later, I guess in Australia and every place else. Uh, most of the money I've made over the past 13 years are from ideas I've learned from you. <laughs> but uh, thanks, uh, Alex. Appreciate you. Uh, Chris Mulvaney, give me, give me one of those ideas. Uh, I'm planning on it, Chris. Uh, dropped you some DMs about Hollywood. Okay. Um, don't know who this is, but okay. I'll take a look later. Um, from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Oh, so cool. Um, Lots of friends in Canada, for sure. My ex-wife is from Canada, uh, from Sudbury. Uh, near Washington, D.C., good to see you, Ned. Uh, Graham Leister in Phoenix, uh, brand new to you and Strategic Profits. Well, welcome, Graham. Uh, glad to have you here. And uh, thank you, Ned, for sharing. And Carlos from Venezuela, hello. And Simon Disney, it's a face for radio. Uh, hey, Simon. And, uh, oh, maybe you're the one who DM me. Yeah, I think I got some of your DMs. If that's you, I know I got to get back to you. Casey, uh, open ears in Greenville, South Carolina. Um, welcome, Casey, and thanks for the positive comments. And Deb, uh, love steal our winners. Thanks. Well, thank you for saying that, Deb. And Glenn, good to see you, Glenn. Did you change your picture? You changed your picture. Oh, no, that's because you're on YouTube. You're watching on YouTube. Cool. And Galen in Atlanta. Well, welcome, Ga uh, Galen. Uh, from Toronto. Wow. So we got the Canada contingent. Uh, you're right. This is my first time on your live stream. Very cool. Uh, what am I drinking? I'm drinking a the two things that I drink the most of. Um, well, the one thing I drink probably the most of. This is my favorite coffee by everyone I've ever given a taste to. Um, they've been blown away by it. It's I just drink it. Drink it black, uh, cold brew, and then uh, a I quit Diet Coke, uh, although I'm on and off all the time. Uh, but this uh, is a monster energy drink. It's the orange one, Sunrise. It's my favorite flavor. Uh, Yvonne, cool. Uh, I'm a former BGS customer. Very cool. Good to know. And nice to 
See you again, I guess. Um, David, Rich, I binged a bunch of SOW interviews this past weekend. It was incredible. I particularly liked the Ryan Levesque interview as well as the Irish guy with the done for you concept. Can't remember his name. Ha ha. Thanks for the great content. Uh, my pleasure, David. And the person that you're talking about, the Irish guy, is Caleb O'Dowd. And I had a long conversation with Todd Brown yesterday about that interview and just how good it was and how there is so much like people are really into right now um, courses, books, programs, et cetera, on how to develop better offers. And uh, Caleb gave a master class on how to develop better offers. And um, I was glad that we I interviewed him on that because uh, his webinar for us absolutely crushed it. Have you had any experience with Facebook challenges? If not, how do you feel in regards to them? Just wondering your thoughts on them. Um, well, I don't know what you mean by Facebook challenge as opposed to a challenge, right? So I'm a big fan of challenges. I think that they are great ways, especially to kick off a new customer a new customer's uh, orientation or onboarding into your business. Uh, most of the time when um, challenges are being done, they are, there are a lot of effort for the company that's hosting them or for the guru that's hosting them and a lot of handholding of clients. And that is really good for getting them to know, like, and trust you. So I'm a big fan, excuse me, I'm a big fan of them. And, uh, but I'm wondering why you call it a Facebook challenge as opposed to just a challenge, but big fan of them. Want to do them for steal our winners. Um, not sure where on the calendar of execution that sits right now. Uh, North. Hello. And Andres from Canada as well. Wow. We got a big Canadian contingent, huh? Uh, just got on board. Well, very cool. Hippie Ike. I like your name. Uh, North is from Montreal. Cool. And Yvonne is from Westport, Connecticut. And Stefan, we, uh, can't say, okay, we'll catch up later, man. Uh, Woka Cola, you mean? <laughs> um, Botswana, South Africa. Well, welcome, Ike. And welcome, Journey to Riches in Seattle. And, uh, you signed up for Caleb slash Matt's course. Awesome so far. Who's the Matt? I don't know who the Matt is, but know who Caleb is. And greetings, Rich. Recently discovered you through Wes Watson. Very cool. Thanks for all you do. Well, thank you for saying that. So, okay. So, yeah. So, as always, right, like we're going to dive into this. And whatever questions that you have would be happy to answer them. Um, I want to show you a presentation that I did at this uh, mastermind I was at last week. Uh, fight flight club and uh, Richard Hall is in Austin, Texas. Cool. Um, because that's uh, where this whole idea that I want to share with you today came from. Now, of course, uh, let's see here. Got to see if I can. What's the best way? No, that's definitely not going to maybe that will work um geez though all right hold on um let's see escape um yeah that's not gonna work at all hold on oh crap I'll turn this off there we go will that do it uh no so what i'm trying to do right now guys is just try to uh make it so that i can actually um, oh, this is going to be difficult. Uh, so I can actually, <laughs> um, show you the slides. That's my, that, w that's my plan here. But all of a sudden I've just lost half my screen. All right. So what happens if I hit share and share screen and, uh, jeez, oh, it's not okay. Share screen. And, Ooh, so I, I promise you guys that it's worth it. Let's just see if I can do this here. Ooh, all right. Put this back here. Sorry, guys. I do apologize. Um, all right, so hopefully, oh, wait, now there we go. All right, 
So perfect for some reason. Um, application window, this. All right, cool. Share. All right. So now you guys should see it. Um, I don't know what bit clout is, Eddie. Uh, you guys see the slides, right? That's the important thing. Let me know if you've you see the slides. And um, I'm just waiting for you guys to let me know. Yep, oh, cool. All right. Thank you, Monica, for letting me know that you see it. All right, cool. All right, so I'm going to move out of the way here for a minute so you can see it completely. And uh, so this was my presentation at this mastermind called Flight Club. And um, I am going to put this here. Okay. And let's see if I go like, no, that I don't want to do. All right. All right. You guys still see it? Yep. All right. Cool. Cool. All right, so um, in seven insanely powerful growth hacks you've never heard of, currently crushing it online. And uh, so here's the whole thought, right? That wine gets better over time, but milk and marketing do not. That at the end of the day, right, that um, the marketing strategies that work best today will not be the ones that work best tomorrow. And the ones that work best tomorrow will not work the best in a year or two from now that long term because marketers tend to beat the living shit out of anything that works we then also diminish the amount of time that it can work um so because of that um there is a preference and an immense power to a marketing idea when it has not been beaten the crap out of, right? So with that said, let's now go to the different ideas. Okay, so the first idea that I had, right, was the idea of giving away something of high value that would uh, also shift beliefs of my clients, right, to then make what I was going to offer more desirable because one of the ways I've always looked at marketing is marketing is helping your prospects value what you have to offer, right? Marketing is helping your prospects value what it is you have to offer. You help them value what it is you have to offer by shifting their beliefs in marketing so that by the time they see the sales letter, their beliefs are already aligned with the solution that the sales letter is offering. And so I wrote this report. This was the report that I wrote back 15 years ago in 2006 in June that I was hoping to get like a dozen clients from this report. It ended up going viral, being downloaded several millions of times, uh, brought me back three and a half million dollars in the first month that that report was released. 7.4 million within the first 12 months and then you know went on from there and it was a really big deal when i released the manifesto right um our website strategicprofits.com was in the top 500 of top visited websites online back in 2006 in fact it was during wimbledon back in 2006 and we had more traffic to our site than Wimbledon had to their site during Wimbledon. Now the if you were to release a free report today it would not move the needle as much as it did back then, right? The whole idea of moving the free line that I that phrase was coined like 3 or 4 years later to accurately portray what I was doing. The, so this was my first really good idea. Now it worked so well, right? That I ended up doing more than just one report. I ended up doing seven of them, 
right? Here are, are these all seven? Yep, I think these are the seven that I wrote. There's actually an eighth that was never released, but there's the Internet Business Manifesto, the missing chapter, the, uh, the final chapter, the Attention Age Doctrine 1, 2, the Maven Manifesto, and the Entrepreneurial Emergency. The, um, oh, geez, uh, tons of texts. I'm going to tell my girlfriend right now, like, do I really need to know this? Do I really? Oh, okay. Okay. I'm on the live stream. Uh, okay, guys. Uh, anyway, so these were the reports. Now, the important thing that I want you to understand here, one, you should understand that marketing is teaching your prospects how to value your product. Take that from this web, take this from this live stream and think about that. Do you actually do that? Because that's how you make marketing that makes selling superfluous. But the reason I'm showing you this now, right, is that this was the first idea that I had that really like totally changed my life. Um, it was extremely unique at the time it is now common as dirt and therefore will not work anywhere near as well but the people that soon jumped on what i was doing also did extremely well this was an idea that was extremely powerful back in 2006 today it's taken for granted it's not going to move the needle but back then it would have and that's the point that i want to convey to you is that um what the hell is this this is the wrong one all right. Um, that I wanted to convey to you. Okay. So that's that. And, uh, um, all right, cool. Um, looks like we're going forward. So everything seems good. Okay. Next live streaming a seminar. So this was my next really good idea. Now you might be wondering why am I sharing with you what I believe were my best ideas of the past. And it's very relevant to where we're going. So I'm not just giving you a history here or a history lesson. I want you to fully appreciate a few things. And the only way to do that is to take you through this. The next big idea that I had was live streaming, live streaming period. We were the first to do it in our market in 2007. Um, we, li we did a live stream from an event that we had in February of 2007. Uh, we had 10,000 people show up online to watch this live stream. And this is what the page looked like. This was the player. Um, we did it through on 24. They're still around today. I still get hit up uh, every once in a while from them. But this was the player and we had people tune in for the very first hour of our seminar that we did once every six months for our clients. And after the first hour, we made an offer that uh, if you were a client, you could watch the rest of the seminar. So we were going to make available a few hundred spots for coaching clients. We sold out in like three and a half minutes um, and uh, they got to watch the rest of this seminar. But uh, then from live streaming, we were the first to do a 24 hour live stream, a 26 hour, et cetera. We've done a lot with live streaming over the years and we, we broke new ground. And once again, it was so ridiculously easy to get that first 10,000 people to show up live for this live stream because it was new and unique. If you do a live stream like what we're doing right now, obviously it's no big deal anymore. Back then it was, and back then it was therefore a lot more powerful. All right. Next, automated webinars. Many of you, since you're on this live stream, probably know I invented automated webinars. I created uh, that report that you see on the right called Supercharge Your Marketing with Evergreen Event Driven Marketing. I gave that software. Th this was the very first automated webinar funnel uh, that was also in that report that I released back in 2007. I gave that report to Russell Brunson when his business was having trouble. I gave it to Mike Filsane when his business was having trouble. It turned both of their businesses around. It was also the model that like Frank Kern based his webinars on uh, as well. And so 
Back in 2007, if you did this, it was game changer. We went in my own business from selling like a couple of back ends a month to selling 10 to 15 a day. It was total game changer for us. The show up rate was really high. The registration rate was really high. The conversion rate was really high. That's because back then there were no automated webinars. Everyone thought that the webinars were live and that we were just doing them every hour or what have you. Nowadays, if you do an automated webinar, you will not get the same results. Just like nowadays, if you do a live stream, you will not get the same results. Nowadays, if you release a free report, you will not get the same results. What made these effective were they were new ideas at the time. I developed these, but they were new ideas at the time that the world hadn't seen and therefore hadn't been beaten this shit out of. All right. So the last idea, right? Those were my three good marketing ideas. Free report slash manifesto, live stream seminar, automated webinars. The VSL is an idea that was not mine. I saw it and stole it, right? So it was invented by John Benson. I saw it, brought it to Agora, and Agora grew from like around $250 million a year to over a billion dollars. Uh, this is the famous billion dollar testimonial from Bill Bonner, the founder of Agora, thanking me for giving them the VSL and helping it boost response rates between 300% and 400% worldwide. But here's the important point about VSLs. Today at Agora, when VSLs are split tested against regular sales letters, it's about the same. Back in whenever this was, I guess around 2008 or nine, whenever I brought it over to them, uh, back then, uh, when we used the VSL, it automatically improved conversion rates by 300 to 400%. Nowadays, it doesn't at all. Once again, you, you were either there and got the benefit of this new marketing idea, strategy, tactic, or you weren't. If you weren't, you, don't, you can't make up for it in the future, like now, right? The results don't carry forward. So in marketing, right, you get the biggest increases in performance when a new tactic or new strategy or a new growth hack or a new marketing idea is first leveraged by a few people. Does that make sense? Let me know what your thoughts are about that. And uh, let's go back to me for a second and we can talk. All right. So let's see what you guys have to say here and then we'll take it further. How about that? All right. Um, cool, cool, cool. Uh, okay. Most people run them in Facebook. I'm just calling it for less confusion, LOL. But I was thinking of trying Pedro Adios method. He reached out to me. I actually have to get back to him. For high ticket on the back end, he told me it works really good with affiliate offers as well. Just wanted to hear your thoughts. Your opinions mean everything to me. Well, thank you, John. I'm a fan. And I think like, I especially like the way Kim Walsh Phillips does it. That's someone to check out, but I like how she has really engineered great processes. Cool. All right. Everybody sees it. Uh, glad to be listening in from near Eureka Springs, Arkansas. I appreciate you too. Cool. Uh, hi, Rich. I still have a question. Would these seven insanely powerful growth hacks work for any online business? Like for instance, a sales and marketing, coaching, and consulting service business? Uh, yeah, it could. Uh, sharing in my Facebook group, live event marketers. Thanks, man. Money loves speed before marketers beat the crap out of it. True that. Um, I was in a three-day seminar when you first released this manifesto. Was I in that seminar or were you just in that seminar? Uh, I literally grew up in Wimbledon, Greater London, and I lived in a couple of kilometers from the Wimbledon All English Tennis Championships, and you had more traffic than Wimbledon back in June 2006. That is correct, but that's probably the only year that I had more traffic. Uh, Francisco, I am doing well. How are you doing, my friend? Uh, hey, Rich. What will be your next course, a home study course or a live course? What will be the course about? Uh, I'm going to re-release my coaching program. That's the plan, right? So um, that will be the next course that we 
roll out. In addition to monthly rolling out steal our winners uh, issues. Taking into consideration that this are no longer as effective, would you still recommend using them, for instance? Yeah, until you come across something better, Andres. Yes, I would say that um, free reports are still really powerful, and I plan on writing them going forward. I might write one even to launch my new coaching program. Not really sure. Uh, automated webinars for sure are, VSLs are, and live streaming. I'm still doing it. I'm doing it right now. So they're all effective, but you got the biggest bang for the buck a long time ago. For those marketers that were seeking success, you're the go-to person. Mike Fulsin and Russell were at the seminar I attended that you were at too. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Well, thank you for saying that. I appreciate it. Uh, Agora Eben Pagan. Um, not sure what you mean there, right? Uh, yeah, so not sure there because uh, Eben never worked with Agora. Uh, yeah, makes perfect sense. Cool. Uh, Rich, what is the meaning of control in terms of copywriting? How it is done? Is it the same as split testing? Oh, okay. Um, so the question is, what is the meaning of a control in the world of copywriting? And a control in the world of copywriting is whatever your winner is, right? Whatever is currently getting you the best response rates it are your controls, right? That's what a control is. Um, Graham, makes sense to me. Cool. So bots are next. Is that what you're saying? No, that's not what I'm saying because it's more uh, conceptual at the moment. Uh, hey, Rich, off topic, let me know. I should email you. I have a multi-million dollar financial publishing company. Do you think it's worth to talk to Agora about acquiring? If so, who should I contact? Um, well, every division, Jeffrey, every division in Agora operates separately. There's nobody big like you speak to Bill and Mark and they decide to purchase, right? Um, there is a gentleman by the name of Miles. He's the CEO. Uh, he would be someone potentially to talk to. Generally, Agora will pay anywhere from three to four times EBITDA. Um, if that's appealing, then uh, you should pursue it. Uh, hey, Raquel, uh, would you recommend in today's online world going into media buying and taking on clients as an ad agency? Uh, Yes, I would. I mean, especially in the world of e-commerce, I would say, Raquel. Um, my friends, uh, James Von Ellswick and Nick Shackelford, uh, two years ago, they did, or maybe it was three years ago, two or three years ago, they took, I think it was 25 underprivileged people or people that were getting out of jail, people that had challenges, and taught them media buying and got them all jobs at like 70K and above annual. Uh, and these were people that like, you know, coming out of jail, coming out of like, had, we're not going to get good jobs on their own. And um, so media buying um, is still extremely lucrative and is a place where most companies can't find enough good people. Long term though, Raquel, uh, media buying will increasingly become less just because the algorithms are getting better and better and therefore they're trying the platforms to close all the loopholes right that a media buyer can generate so long term the job prospects aren't great but in the short run they're great and if you pivot along the way you'll be fine right so creative is going to become increasingly more valuable because it's going to be the highest leverage point of any advertising or marketing campaign. Where it gets placed will be more algorithm-based, but the creation of it will be increasingly more valuable. That's why guys like Nick Shackelford, who have like a Facebook agency that last year like placed like $85 million worth of Facebook ads, has created a secondary agency where he's only doing creative because he sees creative as being really 
the big lever going forward. So I hope that helps Raquel. Uh, this is top-notch information, brother. Most of the gurus out here still beat the crap out of the old ideas, and it's opening my mind to see where they all came from. Thank you for sharing, Rich. My pleasure, my friend. Um, thanks, Rich. Will your coaching program be for already successful entrepreneurs or people starting out? I really work with the entrepreneur, and my goal is to compress like 20 years of experience into a few months with that entrepreneur so that their overall decision-making process, what they spot as opportunities versus distractions, how they run their business, how to spot talent, how to get rid of bad talent, these kinds of things. So it's much more based on the entrepreneur and it really doesn't matter where you're at in your current business. But what does matter is, is that you have some business experience. So I would much prefer to coach someone who's been successful offline in something and now is coming online, they might be inexperienced online, but they have a track record of being successful than, um, than someone who might be a little bit more successful online, like, but has never had any real world business experience. I don't know if that it clarifies it, Andre or not, but, um, it's much more. So I would say for the most part, you should already be a successful entrepreneur, but if you've ever been a successful entrepreneur, it would also be valuable. It could also be extremely valuable for someone just starting out. I just don't know if it's the highest and best use of their time. And I don't know that they would, I think they'd get more from other people as far as first steps. I hope that makes sense, Andre. Um, hi, Rich. Who do you think will win next UFC event, Masvidal or Usman? And will you watch it? Um, I will watch it. Um, I don't know if you can see. Oh, no, it's hidden right now. Um, but uh, I, I always pick fights wrong. I'm very bad at picking fights. Uh, I let my emotion. Probably Usman will win, um, but I'm rooting for Masvidal. But I like them both. Um, I'd like Masvidal to win. I think that'd be a lot more exciting. Uh, Rich, I have another question. How do I go about doing joint ventures with other internet online marketers? You approach them. I'm not sure I understand the question, Rajesh. Uh, ask it in a different way. Reminds me of the famous turtle traders in trend following investment. All these guys became hugely successful. Yeah, for sure. In a world where everyone is preaching niching and specialization, how would you balance that as a generalist at heart? How are you able to be seen as a specialist commanding high ticket prices, but not pigeonholed into doing all the things that bring you fulfillment? Yeah, that's a tough one, uh, David. I'm a generalist, right? Jay Abraham's a generalist, and we often kind of talk amongst each other, right? How much easier our jobs would be if we were specialists because we'd be able to provide so much value to just that small group of people. Of course, um, it's much more difficult to be a generalist and to be able to thrive. Um, some of that I think has to do with timing. Some of that has to do with, you know, personality, et cetera. Um, you know, one of the things that gives me a competitive advantage being a generalist is that I've been online for 20 years, right? So I've been around when every mode of advertising was first introduced. I was here like online when Overture uh, was around and before Google AdWords and then after Google AdWords and after Google Display and Google Video and then YouTube. And, and so because of that, I've been able to learn each piece along the way. So someone gets online today and it's overwhelming. There were so few options for so long that as each option was became available through technology, it, it was very slowly mastered. So I'd say that's one. And what I would to answer the bigger question, though, David, what I would say is this. You always have to have a beachhead. You always have to have something that you are known for, even as a generalist, right? I'm a generalist, but obviously much more online than offline, even though I have lots of offline experience. Um, you know, could I help an e-commerce company grow? Yes, I've helped many. But am I the best choice for that? No, right? Um there are people who know e-commerce better than I do. 
Um, that doesn't mean I can't help an e-commerce company. It just depends on where they are, right? Whereas probably I'm best with gurus, info publishing, and things like that, because that's what I've spent the most time on. So that's my beachhead. Uh, it's important if, whether you're going to, whenever you approach a market, you want to have a beachhead, whether you micro niche at first to kind of put a flag in the ground and then expand out from there. Or if you're a generalist, you're still going to pick a niche and then expand out from there. So it's always better to be as, as targeted as you can be in the beginning and then build out from there. James Von Ellswick, the guy Rich talked about, has a native ads course called Nothing But Natives. Might be worth checking out. Hope that helps. Not sure who you were giving that advice to, Marcus, but James is one of the best at native ads out there, period, bar none. Uh, yes, helps tremendously. Thank you. I'm also into creative, so that was very enlightening to know. Cool. Glad you enjoyed it, Raquel. What skill would be most valuable in marketing in the future? Copy and positioning? Uh, I would say that it, when it comes to marketing and advertising, it's going to be about ads that capture attention, hold the tension and move action, right? Capturing attention is about stopping the scroll, getting people to stop, right? Then getting them to lean in, read, watch the ad, right? and then taking whatever action the ad is. That will be a tremendous amount. That will always be in premium. That will always be in demand. Gabrielle, hey, Rich, what strategy do you think works better for the Hispanic or Latino market? I think the same things that work in the English-speaking market work there, but marketing, because marketing is most powerful when first introduced, like tactics and strategies, right? Um, each market is going to be different based on the timeline, right, of that geography. So, for example, um, Japan is several years behind the U.S. as it relates to online marketing strategy, as the whole world is, right? But in Japan, for example, I'm a bigger deal in Japan than I am in the U.S. because when Japan, like, if we went into our rise in 2006. Let's say Japan went in in 2012, like their 2012 was our 2006, right? They were six years behind. Um, we've been in Japan solid from 2012 till today and never my break here in the U.S. happened, but not overseas. So I'm a bigger deal there now. Um, we just opened up Italy. So strategicprofits.jp is our Japanese site strategicprofits.it is our Italian site and um, each but there would be a difference between Mexico versus Spain one of those countries is probably further ahead than the other I'm not sure which though Gary Ambrose man long time no speak good to see you my friend uh, we should reconnect I would love to talk to you man it's been too long uh, I sell workshops. Very cool. Rich, what are the criteria to be accepted to your coaching and what is the cost? Uh, let's not go into that right now, Amit. I'm not here to pitch my coaching program. Uh, trust me, I will be pitching it at some point soon, uh, but not yet and not today. Okay. Uh, but I appreciate the question and appreciate you for asking it. How about that? Um, cool. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's go back to where to the presentation and then we'll come back okay um all right so 2000 wait i don't know if you're seeing it no it might help if you actually see the presentation i would think oh uh, that's too big so let's go like that cool let's get rid of raquel and all right so you know here in the presentation i'm just talking about how i took these years off right don't need to go into that not for this. Those are the two owners of Agora um, or the two founders. Uh, Mark Ford is in the middle and Bill Bonner is on the right. Um, Bill Bonner, the one, the gentleman on the right is probably the only copywriter. Well, maybe David Ogilvy did too, but uh, the only copywriter that became a billionaire. 
Um, why do I have a hundred million dollars here? Oh, okay. So this was about building a hundred million dollar business in internet marketing. Uh, this is all about Agora. We can, we've covered that before. I'm not going to go into all the things that make Agora a competitive company, unless that is of interest to many of you. So let me actually ask you, do you want me to go over this slide about Agora? Like, do you want to understand better why Agora, um, is so profitable? So let me know. And as we look at your answers, I will, uh, um, I will, uh, just scroll down to see what people say here. And there's always, yes, yes. Okay. Does anyone not want me to talk about Gore? Cause all I'm seeing are yeses. Priya, I see you and I will get to you. I promise. Uh, okay. Everyone's a yes. Okay, cool. So then let's do that. And, and just quick aside here, guys. Um, I, I appreciate you guys taking the time to respond. It's makes it, it makes my life a lot easier to help you guys, or at least to present, uh, the material, um, when you guys give me the feedback. So let's dive in. Okay. So, um, all right, well actually, yeah, let's go there. Uh, okay. So I've shared this before, but I think it's important and you probably cannot hear this you, you can't overhear this because the more you hear this, the better off I think you are. Um, Peter Drucker talked about how the only purpose of a company is to get and keep a customer. Something to that effect, right? He also said the goal of marketing is to make selling superfluous. The, but let's look at that first quote, right? The, the only purpose of a company is to get and keep a customer. If it, let's just go with that for a second, right? That that's the only reason. Um, well, if your goal is to get and keep customers, what are you going to use to get customers? And how do you make sure that you always have the best bait to acquire new customers. The way Agora does this is by having newsletters as what they use to first sell customers. So they use newsletters for customer acquisition, right? To acquire customers. Now, why do they use newsletters and why are newsletters a superior, why does what makes a newsletter superior for a front end right now in direct response, we call products that are designed to get a customer as opposed to make money on a customer, get a customer, right? That we call that the front end. We call the back end what we use to monetize the customer. So the front end is to get it. The back end is to monetize it. So why is a newsletter one of the best front end type of products? And let me tell you why. For the very, the primary reason, and there's really two main reasons, but the, the I'd say, well, they're both incredibly important. So the two primary reasons, uh, or the two most important reasons. The first one is that when you sell a newsletter, because it's future based, but you don't know what's going to happen in the future, you can't promise what's going to be the article next month or next six months from now. So the way that newsletters are sold or continuity programs are sold is generally by premium, a bonus, right? Like 20 years ago, if you signed up for the magazine called Sports Illustrated, you would get a phone in the shape of a football. If you subscribe to Ad Age magazine, they gave you a mug that said world's best ad, you know, advertiser or ad man. Those are premiums, right? So pre 
newsletters are sold by premium. And the way that they're sold by premium is that the sales letter will have the first whole half of the sales letter be about the premium that you get for free when you subscribe to this newsletter, okay? The benefit of that is, is that you can therefore have 100 different offers for your newsletter and they will all look different because they will all be based on the premium. Agora has a tremendous number of in-house copywriters. Those copywriters can all be working on promotions for that one newsletter and they will all be different because the copywriter has to come up with the premium because the premium is what the theme of the entire sales letter, right? So because of that, you can always be putting in new premiums and now you have a new promotion for this product. And because of that, it allows Agora or the copywriter to think about what premium would most resonate right now today in this market and create that to be the thing that the buyers will get for free when they subscribe to the newsletter. So that's first, right? Most marketers or entrepreneurs online think that they got to change their product in order to have a new offer. That's insane. You want to have as many different offers as you can for an individual product and newsletters fit the bill of that because you're constantly just changing the premium so that you have a completely different offer. And that's the first reason. The second is that a newsletter is so it's sold, but then the deliverable is a year, which is valuable because that gives the seller, in this particular case, Agora, a year to bond with that customer to get them then to buy a back end, which is all about monetizing the customer and increasing the lifetime value, right? So we have this product that can immediately like bend to whatever's hot in the market to help us acquire customers and then stick with that customer long enough to get them to know, like, and trust us to get them to buy more expensive things. All right. So that's what that first point means. Newsletter front end sold by premium. Uh, there's a two billion. We, you know, we're about a two billion dollar company, all selling information products, which I'll let you guys do the math of the margins that are involved in information. And right now there's a three billion dollar offer on the table for one of the divisions, Stansberry, which is also part of Legacy. Uh, or legacy is part of Stansberry. And there's a $3 billion offer on the table right now that should be completed in May next month, where one of the divisions of Agora will be sold for $3 billion to a SPAC. It's in the hit business. And this was described to me back in when I was in retailing or when I was in the music business, both in retailing and the music business, both of those businesses are the hit business. In the retail, in retailing, they, like we would make our season based on just a few products. And part of the goal in retail was to figure out what those products were that were gonna make our season as early as possible by like looking at sales daily and weekly and what's the percent of sell through, et cetera. Because the sooner we could reorder those, the sooner, the more of that we'd have, the more of what was popular we'd have in stock, right? And so that would make our season. In the music business, we all know this, right? Like a gazillion songs get created every year very few of them get known, even fewer of them become hits, even fewer of them uh, become like, you know, the ones that are the super hits. What Mark Ford, uh, one of the founders of Agora shared with me a long time ago, which I've always taken to heart, was that he said he's never had anything that started out shitty that became a home run. In other words, like we're going to be putting out these offers from that newsletter premium, right? And we're going to be putting out as many of these as we can and based on our experience, the ones that start out crappy will never be great, but the ones that we will have a few that start out great and those will be home runs. Personality driven business. So even though Agora is a $2 billion business, um, you might not have ever heard of Agora if you hadn't been in direct response. And that is because everything is sold by personality, by a guru. So Agora is never the lead of any product that's being sold. 
Um, it's an offer factory. So because we're in the hit business, because it's so easy to generate offers by developing new premiums, we're seen as an offer factory. We're going to, the, the pace of the business, how many offers are being put out will determine to a large extent, the success and the growth of that business. Those are the important things. I could get into a, a lot more detail about Agora, but that's not the purpose of today's live stream. So I think we'll leave the Agora issue or info at that. I'm going to go back to me for a minute. And let me just see what the next slide is. Okay, yeah. Next, we'll go into the ideal front end. And, uh, but first, sorry, let's go back to the questions for a few minutes here. And let me say hello. Wow, I think that we've got a lot of people on right now. That's pretty awesome. 63 on my fan page, 10 in the Facebook group, 19 on YouTube. Things are growing. Cool. We've got one on Periscope, even. Uh, and it doesn't show LinkedIn. It never shows LinkedIn on this, but it does show it there. All right, let's see. what It, it doesn't show you how many people are on LinkedIn, though. Huh. All right, anyway. So let's go back to your questions here. Uh, let's see. Uh, from YouTube. Hey, Rich, what is the fastest, best way to get to guru status? Essentially, what would you recommend in terms of getting noticed and paid attention to? Well, you have. So there's two points to this, right? Um, well, OK. So the fastest and best way to get to guru status, I'd say, is a powerful demonstration. Now, what you're going to powerfully demonstrate, I can't tell you. I'm not sure what you're doing. Um, but understand that, like, in every campaign that I've ever done, there were really kind of multiple pieces, you could say. Uh, there was something designed to get attention. And then there was something else designed to use that attention to shift beliefs or what have you, right? So the very first report I wrote, the Internet Business Manifesto, um, that was enough. So that was enough to get attention and also to hold on to it and, and, and you know, transfer beliefs. Um, when I wrote the uh, final chapter, I'm trying to think of when that was, yeah, the final chapter, when I wrote the final chapter, um, the, uh, 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 I, I'm trying to think of what I did there. That was when we did the live stream, right? The, uh, the live stream event, the, when I did the final, when I did the attention age doctrine one, um, what did we do? We did something. I don't remember, but that was to sell a live event. Then for the, the Attention Age Doctrine 2, I did a 26-hour, was that the 26-hour live stream? Uh, don't remember. My point though is, is that we always did something to get attention. And then we also did something to translate that attention into belief. So that's first and foremost, I would say, uh, plyo coach that probably the easiest way though, is to, um, have an insanely strong guarantee, uh, that is by application only. So my guarantee when I first started was when I was personally coaching people, you will double the amount you make. You will cut the number of hours you work in half, which will equal 4X uh, as far as time invested payoff from your business. And uh, if not, I will give you a complete refund. So we will work together for over a year. And you, when we're done, you will either be four times more effective at bringing in money per hour, right? Your business will double and you will work half as much or I will refund you every single penny that you ever paid me. Um, I got a lot of people to apply. I picked correctly. I was able to get those people the result. And the course that was created from it was my coaching program. So there's that, right? But you need to get attention and you need to translate, translate that attention into belief. 
And the number one, uh, you, you need to get your stuff out there and the stuff that you get out there needs to be good. And so anything good you create needs to be proliferated all around the internet, right? Hope that helps play out. Uh, hey, Rich, I'm launching a business with a free report first and access to a resource library after. So should I look to charge for that or give free access? Well, you want to, if I understand the question correctly, Yvonne, um, I would say you want the first part to be free if you can, because you want as little friction as possible to get people into your business, right? So I would say uh, free access at first all things being considered the same. Hey, Priya in Israel, good to see you. Uh, when will you be launching your online entrepreneur coaching program? Will that be part of your Steal Our Winners or a separate coach? It'll be separate. Uh, Steal Our Winners will be the front door of our business. The coaching program will be behind that. Um, would you say that Dan Kennedy is a generalist or is he has a core expertise? No, I'd say Dan is also a generalist as well. Rich Sheffern was a specialist in online advertising, but has since become a generalist because it's been around for 20 years, like Amazon starting with books, but now everything. Perfect. I totally agree. I would say that to be the case. I'd say online marketing, really, to start. Uh, do you have recommended resources in building a sales team? I can sell on the phone, but scaling is my biggest challenge. Cole Gordon, C-O-L-E-G-O-R-D-O-N. Cole Gordon, he's a contributor to Steal Our Winners. We've hired him to build our uh, phone processes. Uh, and uh, he's considered the guy. Uh, who would you recommend for someone that wants to start an online business, helping people reach their dreams and goals, become their authentic self? How, who would you recommend for someone that wants to start an online business, helping people reach their dreams and goals, becoming their authentic self? Um, I guess that all depends, Journey to Riches. Um, what skills do you already have and what skills do you not have? All right. Like, do you know how to already help someone reach their dreams and goals and become their authentic self? And you've been doing this offline. You're just trying to figure out how to bring it online. Is this like completely new to you? I need more. Tell me more. Um, great insights. I appreciate it. My pleasure, buddy. Uh, Jason in Tampa. What up? Amy Amit Newfield. Rich, how do you see direct response marketing five years from now? Um, it will evolve. <laughs> I'm sure you already knew that though. Um, I think you're going to see a lot more live stream selling uh, like this, but now me busting into some kind of pitch of if you want the top five ideas that I didn't share, you know, you can pay a dollar right now, something right. But more interactive. I think that is what you will see more of for sure. Wow, Gary Embrus was at that seminar that I was at. Oh, very cool. Well, so you're seeing a lot of uh, old timers here, huh? Myself included. I'll jump in here. I tend to feel that with information products market becoming more crowded, customers are starting to look more for a teacher that is a personality match rather than looking more at the quality of information the teacher is providing. Any thoughts on that? Um, yeah, I would say that... Um, in addition to that, right, there's a big difference between people who really see the teaching of something as like their lifetime purpose versus someone who is trying to build a business based on teaching that, right? And what I mean by that is, is like Tiago Fort, right? Build a second brain, someone who I'm a fan of, someone who I'm friendly with, someone I've learned from, uh, you know he's probably gone through 13 or 14 revisions of his build a second brain course and will continue to do so because his business is more a like almost secondary output of his labor of love on knowledge management. I think you'll see more people who will certainly be doing that. I also think though that, um, that, yeah, I think you're 100% right, Gary, that 
it will be based on personality. It'll be based on trust. It'll be based on reputation. Um, and word of mouth, ultimately, um, I think transparency will only increase that there will be ways of really assessing um, the quality of a product as far as the success that its customers and clients get. So I imagine that transparency will increase. Um, I think that competition will continue to increase, that there will be a much wider selection, right, of courses that will therefore be much more relevant to our lives, that as as options increase, we tend to look for more perfect matches to what we're looking for. And I believe that that's not going to change. Um, but I also believe that AI is going to do is going to be a major game disruptor. And I think this is a bigger conversation than one that I don't really want to have right now, but that it, it has been something that I've mentioned numerous times that there's an overall shift in marketing and overall and targeting from context to identity. It's a bigger conversation, but I think that then how that spins out, I don't know, but I think it, the, the implications of that are pretty huge. All right. One thing I see in emails now is the subject line, big belly, and then subject line, drink this tea to lose one pound while you sleep, blah, blah. Do you recommend this approach or is it just better to put your name in the from not name? Long term, it's better to put your name in the from line. Uh, you can actually get in trouble if you change it to certain things, but you certainly get a bump the first couple of times that you shift it and um, can be very useful. So this is one of those strategies. Powerful first time it's seen, uh, maybe somewhat powerful the next time it's seen, less powerful as time goes on, right? But certainly as it's a gimmick, right? But it's a gimmick that can work. All right. These were some of the yeses about the Agora stuff. So I don't need to go further there. Jeez. Okay. There we go. Yes. 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 Okay. Just scrolling down. Yes. Cool. That's always welcome. Yeah. So Agora, I, well, Agora used to be a co owner of my business for two years. But Robert Kiyosaki, Grant Cardone, um, James Altucher, the all have Agora products. Um, yeah, it's it's we're pretty large. Um, all right, sending light. Thanks, Priya. Yes, okay. Talk about Michael Masterson and his work there. Well, Michael. Masterson, his real name is Mark Ford. Mark is um, really like a surrogate father for me. He's a mentor, but he's so much more than a mentor. In fact, um, I have a building that in Delray that I really just want to continue renting. I got an offer and I don't think I should sell it, but um, I was reaching out to Mark today because I wanted to get his advice on whether I should sell it or not. Anyway, um, that must have been a while ago. That's the event. Yeah. Uh, oh, I don't think I was ever at Gary's event. Certainly not the viral integration synergy system, but maybe. Rajan Drush. Drunch. Hi to you. Um. All right. Uh, I think it's literally the perfect model for information. New sales angles every issue. That leads to unlimited offers. Amazingly awesome sauce. Totally agree. Um, great to see you. Cool. Cool. Uh, would you recommend to contact local business in my local area and sell and promote my sales and marketing coaching consulting business face-to-face? -face, or would it be more effective just to connect with potential clients on Facebook and LinkedIn? Rajesh, I would say that it is always... So I know that that's a strong statement, but I believe this to be the case. It is always better to try and sell in person first if you can, 
because you will learn so much about how people respond uh, and all of that will apply to how you do things online. So having experience, whether you're selling online in a live way or offline in a live way, but selling live and getting the feedback of your target market is so valuable. And it's why like I never recorded a, an automated webinar. I recorded webinars until I got it right. And when I got it right and the conversions told me I got it right, then that became the automated version. The, yeah, get, get dirty, <laughs> dive in there. And what you will learn belly to belly, face to face is so valuable to everything that you'll do online. Uh, do you have to build an audience before putting out a product or offer? For example, if I want to market an info product, do I have to have a following or an audience? Also, did you? Did you or do you have to have proof that what you offer works before putting out the product or service? I would say, look, uh, Raquel, it certainly is a lot better to have a following before you put out a product or offer. It's certainly better to have proof than not have proof. Um, all of these are obstacles that will be difficult to overcome when you first start, but they're difficult for everyone, right? Um, and that you can build a following by creating something that you want to give away free that people opt in for that you share in a community that you create videos on etc right so i would say that a lot of the work that goes into building a following is the same work that you should be doing to build your product so the goal is, is to figure out how to get the most amount of leverage from everything you're doing so how is it that you can use the time that you're going to put into building a product to actually help you get a following and get your business off the ground? In an ideal world, that's what you should be thinking about, and that's very doable. I've seen Cole Gordon's Facebook ads. Knowing Rich endorses him for building sales teams is a major proof point for me. Thanks. You're welcome, Marcus. Really solid guy. Uh, what is the best way to attract business owners to work one-on-one -on -one with them on their performance for a high ticket offer, working with them for 90 days to prioritize and work on the right thing for them and solve inner and outer conflicts. What is the best way to attract business owners to work one-on-one -on -one with them on their performance for a high ticket offer, working with them for 90 days to prioritize and work on the right thing for them and solve inner and outer conflicts. Marcus, you got to translate that into something that, it's not your clients or prospects jobs to figure out how solving their inner and outer conflicts is going to change their lives. That's your job. And the better that you're able to show them that the outcomes that happen when you're able to solve inner and outer conflicts, like is the better that you're able to show them that the better that you're convincing them that they need to solve their inner and outer conflicts, the better that some of them will be able to see their current challenges as being caused by unsolved inner and outer conflicts that they are coming to you saying, will you help solve my inner and outer conflicts? Like people came to me saying, I'm an opportunity seeker can you help me become a strategic entrepreneur? So, right, you have to make the case that the challenges that they're experiencing are being caused by their inner and outer conflicts, that it's the reason they haven't been able to solve whatever issues they've been trying to solve and how things automatically get better when those get better. That, if you look at the structure of my reports, that's what they do. Same with my webinars. Hopefully that helps, Marcus. Um, it should. Uh, AI and voice search optimization are going to be huge. Yeah, they already are. What advice would you give a musician, actor, athlete who's an authority celebrity in their industry and wants to create and launch their first online course, coaching, full service marketing? I would say find someone, John, that you can partner with who knows everything there, there is to know about marketing, selling courses, things like that, and to 
to find the there are many people these days that work with influencers ultimately an authority celebrity is an influencer a guru is just a type of influencer there are many people out there now who work with influencers and help them monetize everything that they're doing and i would suggest john if you uh if that's if you're that it's much better to work with the right people than it is to try and be take your time to become that don't know if i'm on the right track there or not john you can tell me facebook user c okay email marketing for e-commerce who to follow to get the best coaching and knowledge email marketing for e-commerce dave miz and he's in the next steal our winners uh, hi, Marcus. I personally send them a personal invitation to connect with them on LinkedIn. However, rather, however, rather than a directly pitch them to ask, I ask them questions and look to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation and ask to jump on a 30-minute call. You can try this method. Michael Masterson wrote several Amazon best-selling books. Yes, like Ready, Fire, Aim, which he thanks me at the beginning for giving him the idea of what to write. Uh, John, same. Cole Gordon for that as well. I still have your offer for strategic profit business growth system for that seminar. Okay. I guess I was there then. I didn't think I was cool. Uh, Hey John. Uh, hi John. Do you want to build an automated sales team or do you want to personally recruit and hire a sales team? It's a former, you can use sales. Yeah. I, I think that he wants actual people. That's the deal there. John, Josh. Uh, can you spell the name of the email marketing? You told Dave, D-A-V-E, <laughs> Miz, M-I-Z. His full name is Ms. Rahi, but he goes by Dave Miz. How do you explain the difference between two groups without making the obsolete group feel like they're wrong or attacking them? Uh, David, you do that by fixating and focusing on the positive intent as opposed to the outcome of the problem behavior. Um, let's see. All right. So let's see here, guys. All right. So let me give you this quick. I want to tie up what I started and, um, yeah, I want to tie up what I started. Then I'll come back to you guys and, uh, we'll talk a little bit more. And yes, I know Joe Polish. All right, so I skipped the slide here. All right, so this is what we were just going over Agora, and now we're talking about what the ideal front end is. And I want you guys to recognize that, like, because I'm not trying to pull a fast one here with you guys. Um, I want you to recognize that uh, I'm talking about marketing ideas that really changed my life, right? And now we're talking about what makes the ideal front end. Where I'm leading to is that steal our winners is, in my opinion, the ideal front end that delivers marketing ideas on par with the ones that changed my life. Now, in this presentation, which I did at a, um, I did at this mastermind, I then broke down a few of the strategies that were shared in Steal Our Winners. Um, yeah, so anyway, Let's talk about the ideal front end and then I'll explain a few last things and then we'll circle back to your questions. So the ideal front end, right, is, a, is something that can tie into what's ever hot right now, right? Because if, if the front end is all about acquiring customers, you want to focus on what's in demand, not what's not in demand. So it ties into what's hot right now is maximizes 
quality acquisition, right? As opposed to just overall acquisition, we want the best customers of our backends. It's relationship building. That's the whole point of having a longer term, like an annual subscription, right? Has higher average card value, right? Higher average card value is so vitally important because at the end of the day, it's going to determine whether we can scale or not, whether we can grow the business or it shrinks, right? If our card value is more than what it costs to acquire a customer, then we're acquiring customers at better than break even, right? If we're acquiring customers at a loss, which most businesses nowadays have to do, um, then we're not going to be able to buy ourselves an infinite number of customers because we don't have the money to go infinite negative to start, right? So then it's always a balancing act is how much can we grow and how fast, right? But if the cart value is higher, then we can grow at a much higher rate. So the ideal front end lends itself to having a higher average cart value. That the ideal front end delivers whatever is being consumed in a way that is most likely to be consumed, right? So, you know, if we're, if we're selling a bunch of information, is that information more likely to be consumed if it's in video, audio, written, what have you, right? And, uh, and if it's a product, right? Like, can, can the way it's packaged, can be the way it's shipped, like whatever, what will lead it to most likely being used, being liked, having good feelings about it, and therefore more likely to ascend, right? Clear path to the back end that it's clear, like when someone buys this, that they will ultimately need or want this more expensive thing accurate latency and lifetime value. Um, I could go on for that for a long time. I won't, uh, but latency being the number of days or time period from first purchase to second purchase or from whatever purchase to whatever purchase, right? But the amount of time that it takes and lifetime value, uh, the, yeah, I was just thinking like, one of the things that I didn't share uh, about Agora is our acquisition would our allowable acquisition cost, which was aggressive, was full cart value, right? Plus 80% of what we think we're going to make from that subscriber over the next six months. So let's say we're selling a $49 newsletter. The average cart value on a $49 newsletter, if done correctly, is about a hundred and a quarter right? Because people will take certain upsells and stuff like that. So the card value is 125. Let's say that we can, we believe that customers who come in for this $49 product that have spent 125 in cart are generally worth about $200 in sales over the next six months. 80% of the 200 is 160, 160 plus the 125 card value. We're now able to spend $285 to make that $49 sale. And that's how you grow a company really fast. Now you have to have deep pockets to be able to do that, but that is what um, Agora's aggressive front end it looks like. Scalable, in other words, we can sell more of this front end without having to do any more effort and provides buyers a quick win. Like, will the buyer get some positive thing back? Like, you know, uh, something that, to let them know it's working. They lose a pound the first day. They get 10,000 fans, whatever. Something tangible that gets them excited. So that is what makes the ideal front end. I hope that's helpful to you guys. Uh, so that is why I created Steal Our Winners, because it really is the world's first digital mastermind that delivers profitable ideas for multi-million dollar business gurus every single month. And that is really what I like, where I feel I need to go with the business is like, we're going to be working on a gauntlet uh, today. And actually, when I finish here and this week, and uh, for me, I want everyone who subscribes to Steal Our Winners to, one, know that that's what's included in every issue, those type of ideas that I have to talk to over 100 contributors every month 
to find the six to 12 or eight to 12 that are good enough to be in steal our winners. And that, um, there's nothing out there that exists like this, that everything else is generally the ideas of one guru at one time um, or someone who's just interviewing people. But this is not where each month calling everyone, what's working, what do you see out there, who do you know that's got something working, et cetera, right? Um, but anyway, the whole point, though, that one of the, well, the whole point, one big takeaway here is that new sells in everything, right? In the clothing business, new sold, in the music business, new sold, and marketing, new sells, and new marketing tactics sell better generally than older ones. That anytime you come across anything that you've never seen before online that is attempting to sell you something, you should pay careful attention to it. All breakthroughs in direct response came from a change in format that when people were first able to personalize in the mail, that was a game changer. When people were able to, when people, when advertisers shifted to Magalogs, which is like, you know, an advertisement in the form of a magazine, uh, that was a huge game changer. Infomercials were a huge game changer. VSLs were a huge game changer. Automated webinars were a huge game changer. Anytime the format dramatically changes and therefore that the, it's, the fact that I'm trying to sell you something is a little bit not as obvious, conversion rates go way up, right? And that's because you're able to get more attention early in the process, which cascades down. So, the whole point of this is really to understand that you, as you think about your business, right, you have a trajectory, you have a certain way that you think you're going to get there, that you should always be on the lookout for better ways of doing that. That doesn't mean that a tactic or strategy comes out and you change your whole business, right? But if there's a better way, of getting those same customers. You know, if let's just talk about challenges for the first time that um, I did an interview about challenges was like a little over a year ago. Um, there's no doubt that challenges work. They're very effective. They were even more effective a year ago. They will be even less effective in a year from now. My point in sharing that is that you recognize where the ideas that are most likely to grow your business come from. And they come from what's less known, not what's more known. Now, that doesn't discount the need to understand the fundamentals, to have a, like a, a, you know, a process that you take prospects or suspects to prospects, prospects to clients, clients to, you know, loyal clients and loyal clients to raving fans. But uh, the, the undertone of everything I've shared should be that action creates clarity, that you learn more by doing than by studying, that the only way that you're going to find that breakthrough idea is being active and in motion. Let's kind of go to your questions. Let's see where, uh, where you guys are at, and then we will see um, what, where we go from here. Uh, what would your suggestion, what would be your suggestion when approaching a business owner for, on LinkedIn by message to connect and move them into a meeting? My idea is to share a guide that adds value to them. What would your approach be? Marcus, that's hard for me to say um, because as a marketer in general, I don't want to have to approach people. I want people to approach me and I want them to think it was their idea to do it. Um, very different, right? And I'm not suggesting that you could do that. Um, but I don't know that I could do what you're asking, right? That's not how I would go about it. I would spend a lot more time figuring out how to get those people to approach me because I know how much, how important that is in the dynamic of positioning.
Any tips to connect and use influencers for promoting courses or events? Uh, Abidali, in the charter issue of Steal Our Winners, there is an interview with Nick Shackelford. Nick Shackelford, uh, most people have heard of the fidget spinner. That was him, right? And his very first Steal Our Winners contribution was how to find, pay, and negotiate with influencers to promote your products because it's his favorite in, it's his favorite marketing strategy and that's the only education i've ever gotten in hiring and using influencers um if you're a steal our winners member i would review that uh interview in depth because he walked us through the tools to use everything yes absolutely agree rich i prefer to work with an expert rather than learn my things from scratch on the same page, my friend. Uh, hi, Rich. What are your favorite PR books to generate buzz on your brand? Uh, there aren't any books per se. I mean, there are great books out there on buzz and PR, but I mean, in the end of the day, it's unique stories and it's paying attention to what you pay attention to, what gets your attention and what gets the attention of others. And then thinking about it. I, when I go into a market, what I want to do is I want to get like, what would get one prospect talking to another prospect of like, have you heard about this? Have you seen that? Right. Uh, yes, I know Joe I've known him for a long time. Uh, I just launched an online community for creatives and entrepreneurs and influencers to help them grow and monetize their platform. What is the best advice you can give me overall to keep on impacting them? Um, geez, that's so wide open, right? They should all be on Instagram and YouTube. I don't know. Like, is that, I don't know where that is. Like in what you're teaching them and, and what you're providing them. Give me a little bit more and maybe I can give you more. Uh, how do you build a relationship with the best? How do you build a relationship the best and fastest way? Um, keep your word, uh, remind people what you're doing for them, let them know the effort that's involved. And when you make a promise, meet it and remind them that you met it. Is copywriting still a future skill or is it also going to be taken over by AI? It long, long term, it will be taken over by AI. How long it's going to take? I don't know. Answer to your question. Have knowledge and skills in digital marketing, lead gen, and SEO. Want to create business around neuroplasticity, brain rewired. What would you recommend for me to connect with? Um, well, I would look at... Um, I'm just thinking about this for a second. The goal is to think about where is that the easier answer? Like what you're offering versus what, right? So in other words, where is this solution an easier solution to them what's currently being offered? That's first, right? Um, and then who specifically do you want to go after who specifically relies on their mind will spend money to make their mind better and would be the easiest to sell right like that's what you need to be thinking about i'd also look at nback that's just a tool it's one of the only tools that i know of that actually if you use it will increase your brain performance um but i would say that uh that People are not interested in any of our solutions. They're interested in what our solutions can generate for them, right? So no one's interested in just being coached by me. Why would they, right? They're interested in having a specific type of business. And if they see my coaching program as the vehicle that gets them there, fantastic. They'll buy my coaching program, right? Same with neuroplasticity, brain rewiring, et cetera. That, that there are people who are into that, right? But that's not how you're going to build a business. You're going to build a business by getting people who were not necessarily considering that. They weren't even sure what they were considering, but they wanted a specific outcome. 
and you have created whatever with these things to get them that outcome. So that's what I would be spent like. This is so critical, you guys. And I think it was. Uh, I learned this from Dan Kennedy. I like I, I think these are my words, but the thought came from Dan Kennedy at the end of the day. It's the person who is best at marketing the expertise, not the best expert that makes the most money. You want to be the best at marketing neuroplasticity and brain rewiring over the person that is best at neuroplasticity and brain rewiring. The person that is best at selling coaching will be the coach that makes the most money. The people that are best at selling hypnosis will be the hypnotists that make the most money. The financial planner that's best at marketing financial planning will make more than the best financial planner. The mistake that most people make is thinking that more time spent on their expertise will generate more income. That is generally not the case, right? That it's in fact the expert at marketing the expertise that is going to make the most amount of money. So that is a function of what do those tools allow you to solve better than all the other tools out there? And then how do you make that case to those prospects? Hope that helps journey to riches. Uh, hi, Rich, how do you market a product or service if you have no capital to invest in Facebook advertising? Look, then you got to create a powerful message. I didn't do any advertising in the manifesto. Zero. We had millions of downloads based on the fact I was giving it away free, the fact that it was valuable, the fact that lots of people shared it, and that affiliates got paid money if the people that downloaded it bought. Uh, Hi, Rich, do I really need to learn the skill of copywriting for my service? You definitely need to learn some copywriting for sure, if, if for no other reason than to be able to judge copywriting, but yeah. Uh, I basically help them with monetize their brands through teaching them online marketing skills. I have artists and authors as well as entrepreneurs in my community. Cool. All right. Rich, do you recommend any book strategies and courses about how to market and sell unobvious products like your course on theory of constraints? Um, well, I taught the report writing workshop where I taught like my overall approach and strategy. Um, at some point, we'll probably turn that into a book. That would be a cool book to make, actually. Hi, Rich. What's the most effective ROI? Uh, free advertising or paid advertising? Well, the most, the highest ROI will obviously be from free advertising. What is consistent, effective, and reliable is paid advertising. Yes, that's what I said, Rajesh. Where can I get a copy of the manifesto? Glad you asked, Monica. Um, I do not know, to be honest with you, but I'm sure that if you type in, in well, you know what? I think you can get it into our in our Facebook group, which is just Strategic Profits. If you can't find it there, um, then you could always just type in Internet Business Manifesto, uh, file type colon, PDF or just internet business manifesto PDF. And a lot of people give it away. So, uh, you can find it there, Monica, uh, rich, what's the difference between launches and challenges? It seems to me that challenges are a new rebranding of launches, just the communication strategy. Um, right. Launches, you were usually delivering content, but you weren't like rolling up your sleeves and working with people individually to get the, to help them get an outcome. Right. So, they're different flavors of different things, right? But I can see where you might say that a bit. So guys, um, well, this has been really kind of action packed. Um, I would love to, I want to share just like the first two or three minutes of the video that I just did with, um, I think this is the right one. Let me just make sure it looks, hold on. Let me just see if this is it. 
I had a guy by the name of Vinny who's a butcher. Right? Yep, this is it. Okay, so let me just show you like the first minute or two of a video. Then I'll come back. We'll wrap up. And life is good, right? Uh, video file. Um, all right, so we're going to share just like the first minute or two of the Michael Francis video that I posted to YouTube. A guy by the name of Vinny who was a butcher around me. He used to bring me my meat. He's a big guy, you know, a scary looking guy. So he comes in, he's carrying a box mm -hmm. on his shoulder. And I said, Vinny, what are we having a party here? Mm -hmm. You know, what, what's with all the meat? He says, it ain't meat, chief. He puts the box down, opens it up. He says, this is the first week's take in the gas business. It was $320,000. The first week. From 1979 to 1985, we grew that into uh, 8 to $10 million a week. <laughs> Hi, I'm Richard Sheffrin, and I'm from Strategic Profits, and today we have a really special guest, Michael Francis. He is the only gentleman who was able to leave the mafia without ratting or dying, basically. Yep, so there we go. Um, so that, yeah, so if you're interested in that video, uh, I interviewed Michael Francis about uh, the takeaways from the mafia that could be applied to entrepreneurship. For those of you who know, um, I was a gopher for a bunch of mafia guys when I was a teenager, like in like 13, 14, 15. They were in the book uh, Wise Guys. That's what the book, that's what the movie Goodfellas is based on. Um, but the guys that I knew were not in the movie. They were just in the book. But Michael knew some of those guys, which was kind of cool. Anyway, so... Um, this was very busy, this live stream, but I want to pull back for a second, right? Look, there, there will be opportunities for each and every one of you at different times to leverage a marketing tactic that kicks ass. That will only happen, though, if you always keep your eyes open for them. Now, you, here's where you won't find them for the most part. You won't find them in a ClickBank product or like, you know, Warrior Forum or WSO for the most part, because most of the time you do not get sold on these strategies. You find them. By the time that they're sold, they still work. Nobody's selling you like something ineffective, but the power of them working is greatly diminished, right? So this is where you gain a lot by taking action and knowing other people who take action and then asking, right? I've shared this in the past. I'll share it again. Uh, Jay Abraham, when he's at the top of his game, will often start all of his conversations by asking the other person on the other line, what's currently working? What have you seen currently working in your market? What is working best for you. And if you have 20 conversations a day and people are sharing that information because you're asking them, everyone that you talk to, it doesn't take a lot to kind of get your radar up to spot those things uh, that, uh, <laughs> that should be noticed, right? So um, anyway... I guess that's it, guys. So I want to, as always, there were a lot of you who um, joined for the first time. I don't know why. I don't know where you saw me, heard me. Um, happy to have you here because, look, there's a million things you could have spent the last hour and a half on. Um, but you chose to be here. I'm very appreciative of that. And I hope it was valuable to you. If it was, then great. I hope you join me again. Um, you know, I do these every Tuesday from two to four and Thursday, six to eight. And I do them because this market has provided me everything that I ever hoped for. I never be as well known. I never thought I would make the kind of money I make. I never thought I'd have the life where I get to work with great people, share what I love and get highly paid for it and thanked and said I'm a good person for doing what I love. And this all happens because uh, people like you show up and want to hear what I have to say. And uh, therefore, I'm honored that you're here. And thank you for listening. If you shared, thank you even that much more. If you commented, thank you as well. If you subscribed or joined our Facebook group, thank you. And uh, 
yeah, that's it, guys. So uh, great to be here. Thanks for being here. I appreciate all the comments and questions. And I will see those of you who decide to be here on Thursday from 6 to 8 p.m. Till then, to higher profits and beyond, Rich Sheffrin, over and out.